Nope, not up. You're up now. Okay. It is Wednesday. Where's Bonnie Pelton? Saying happy Wednesday, uh, quilt as you go Wednesday. Okay, hold on, just making sure I'm all up. I can see Facebook and I'm working on Insta, or not Insta, hi Amber. Wow, you get the award for being first. Nice job, sister. Um, okay, sorry guys. <laughs> Technology, you know, right? So YouTube's just coming on. All right. Hi, Becky. All right. So if you're on Facebook or YouTube, I can now see you. Bonnie Pelton, she says I'm here. All right, sweetheart. Bonnie, I have a special message just for you today. Um, your table is delayed a day or two because USPS, the postal service, uh, ran out of their flat rate boxes. And so mom and dad in Arizona ordered them on Monday and they should be there tomorrow and then your table will start its way towards Illinois. So it's coming, sister. Hi, mom. Hi, Linda from Texas. Judith. Um, Judith Ann, how are you, sweetheart? <laughs> Amber says, yay, I'm usually late. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> Faye and Mesa, hi. Missy Fisher, uh, greetings from Redmond. The blustery, wet, windy Redmond. Hello, Carolyn from Iowa and Nancy. Hi there, sweetheart. I have everybody's pictures ready to show tonight. We couldn't get our stuff together last week. And then Melanie from Mississippi Gulf Coast. Hi, sweetheart. All right, oh, hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. All right, well, it's been a week. Um, oh, and Jennifer from Alabama, hello. Uh, we here have been watching election results roll in. And so I think my husband's really tired because I think he was stayed up pretty late last night. And yet here we are in the same place we were at this time last night. Who knows who the president's gonna be? Hi Donna, how are you? Donna Becker, or Dorina, I'm sorry. My contacts aren't fabulous for close up. Let me just scoot my computer a little closer here. And Angel, hello from Houston. Thanks for joining us. Tonight is Quilt As You Go. Um, it's Bonnie Pelton's favorite night of the week. <laughs> Uh, we are doing our Lake Havasu block. Can you, oh, it's still, let me, la, la, can you guys see that? Okay. Hang on. I'm going to turn this down just a hint. Oh, not the right way. There. Just washing it out. Okay. Can you guys see that okay? So it looks like the falls. You have your falls and then your high walls. So it's Lake Havasu. We never made it to Lake Havasu when we lived in Arizona. It was super sad. It was one of my, um, one of my uh, hot spots that we definitely wanted to get to. But from the Valley of Phoenix, it is almost a six-hour drive, and it was just like I don't even know why we didn't go through it when, um, like, on one of our road trips up north, but we didn't. Um, but it was one of my biggest regrets about not hitting while we lived in Arizona. Um, I don't know if she's going to be on, but Bridget from Rimrock. Rimrock, is Rimrock close to Havasu? I know it's up north. Um, hi, Lisa from Connecticut. Thanks for joining us. So anyway, tonight's block is fairly simple. I am excited to report that we only have two more weeks left of sampler blocks. Hello, how did we get here? Uh, no one freak out. I've been working on what we're going to do next. <laughs> Everybody's like, no, it's not coming to an end. So anyway, um, uh, in fact, next week is going to be our Tombstone, Arizona block. We did make it to Tombstone. Lots of fun stories about Tombstone. Um, and then the last week of the project is from Payson, Arizona, which is also called The Rim. Payson is where all of the people that live in the Valley of Phoenix go to escape the summer heat. Lots of camping and... Um, lots of ponderosa pines, uh, needled trees. It's very fun up there. Judith says, spent many winters in Havasu and it was amazing. Oh, so jealous. That's pretty awesome. Hi, Debbie Allen Sinclair. Good afternoon from Kentucky. Had a warm and sunny, beautiful day. Nice. Sharon is on from Missouri. Nice. Thanks for joining us. 
Kellyanne says Havasu is a major me party party. The canyon north of Havasu is gorgeous. I grew up at Havasu. Oh, that's fun. Over the summer, that's fun. The canyon looks like your block. Well, good thing. <laughs> Oh, it's Havasu itself is a horrible mess because of partying. I believe that. Oh, I thought my necklace was caught on my school bell. Um, we live, obviously, in the Seattle area, and there is a river um, that runs through the center of the state that kind of divides the state um, in half, and it separates what we call the eastern Washington and western Washington. And there is several party party towns like Crescent Bar and Sunland there on the Columbia uh, and there are party party towns also. Chris, <laughs> Chris is like, hi from Lake Havasu. Hello, this one's for you, sister. <laughs> Mom says, have you seen that clear ruler that, that has only a couple inches wide? It helps you, uh, helps your quilt top blocks get straighter than doing, oh yeah. I have one of those. Yep, lots of lots of clear rulers around here, Mom, of every shape and size, I can assure you. Hi, Mary from Seattle. How are you, sweetheart? All right, let's get some work done. If you are just joining me, um, and this is your first time, I like to say hi to my friends. So I'm sorry, I, there is some good, interesting content. I'm getting to, uh, to it now, but thank you for hanging on for the greetings. Um, I, um, ever since COVID and kind of having to stay at home and not be around my people. You guys are my people. So it makes me happy, it gives me joy to spend time with you every single week, a couple times a week. And so thank you for being gracious and letting me hang out with you. Um, all right, so I put the cutting instructions up on the uh, blog or the website. So if you are following along, you know that it is our website, uh, featherweightdoctor.com. And then you go to scroll to the middle of the home page. You're going to go to journal and blog post. And then um, this is the most current one, the week 14. Um, and <clears throat> so it's the Lake Havasu block. So that's how you can find me uh, where I am at. All right. So tonight's block is easy. Er, I decided I'm going to uh, tombstone is not easier. So um, prepare yourself for next week. Um, we are just gonna, oh, this is a little short. I need to grab a different backing. Um, so anyway, this block has not that many pieces to it, unlike some of our other blocks. Oh, <laughs> Ray is keeping me on point today. All right, so let me, I asked you guys a few weeks ago to send me some pictures of how your quilt as you go is going. Uh, and I'm pretty excited with everybody's response. It really amazes me when you pick a different color palette and have different types of fabrics and textures, how different the quilt looks. So, I mean, you guys can see mine. It's like off the chart bright. But some of you ladies have like the best taste. Um, so let's go ahead uh, and go ahead and roll one of those things. I think we'll start with Miss Bonnie Pelton. Uh, she... Um, is a little bit computer challenged and so her sweet daughter helped her to uh, put this <clears throat> picture in an email to me. So this is Bonnie's quilt. It is very soft and soothing. I love it. I love that coral color. Absolutely love that coral color. So way to go Bonnie. Very nice. All right let's move on to Nancy and I I'm not going to say this right, but I think it's Finkel Bay. Am I saying that right, Nancy? Um, Nancy's block as you uh, block of the week is going along just swimmingly also. It is a totally different color palette than Bonnie's. You can see it has a much different tone to it. Uh, I, it's funny, that, look, that 66 for Route 66 for Winslow, Arizona. In hindsight, I wish I would have done something a little different, but actually it's like kind of jumps out of the quilt, <laughs> jumps off the, the thing at you. So it's kind of fun at the same time. All right. So look at Nancy's. Isn't that pretty? Hi, Pam Green. All right. Let's go to last but certainly not least my buddy and local friend, Missy Fisher's uh, block. Missy is 
lives here in Redmond like me and uh, but now we know what each other looks like so it's not like we'd walk past each other in a grocery store or anything so that's good uh, Missy's fabric is <clears throat> I absolutely love that blue orange color palette it just makes me happy so very 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 fun Missy all right well thanks for sending those in uh, if you have I I hope I got all of you I don't I don't think I missed anybody, but if I missed you, please give me grace, first of all, but then resend it because I want to make sure that I'm sharing everybody's um, projects with everybody else to kind of keep us all keep us all going. Okay. Thank you, Ray, for reminding me. All right, let's get into it. So just like other weeks, I'm going to put my pattern down on the table and I'm going to put my fabric down in order so that I don't do what I did last week, which is to get everything out of order on our Tucson block. I'm sure you guys have never done that before. Never. All right, I'm laying these down. Make sure everything's in order. Is everybody having a good week this week? Uh-oh, where's my other piece? Okay. I'm not sleeping awesome, actually. I don't know why. No particular reason. Sometimes 3 a.m. and I are good friends. <laughs> Dreaming up ways to torture you with the featherweights. <laughs> all right, Becky says, love them all. I still don't have mine laid out yet. Need to do that. Yes, you do. Oh, here, Ray. Speaking of Ray, we love to see you on Friday night with your mom. <laughs> there you go. Becky is encouraging you to come over and sew with me. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Missy says, cool to see them all. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna start sewing these backgrounds to my colored, um, <clears throat> my colored blocks. I'm just gonna go down the line here, try and keep them in order, you know, like I did last week and then didn't quite get it that right. So I'm using my quarter inch foot to make sure I have a good seam allowance and We've been getting a lot of rain here this week and I know what's gonna happen. Mark my words. The ground is horribly saturated from all of the rain that's come in. And I'll bet everybody that the wind comes in in a few days and takes every tree off of the, every, uh, every leaf off of the tree. It'll be winter by this time next week around here. <laughs> Oh, Jennifer says she's looking forward to see you, Ray. <laughs> she's like, great mom, thanks. <laughs> Bonnie says, I love all the different colors. And grandma would also like to see you, babe. Keep them coming, girls, keep them coming. Okay. I've had lots of machines in the shop this week. Like, I think I've had five through. Oh, when I went to print 14, I kept, print the number 14, I keep getting Blake Havasu add when I go to print the pattern, I only get a portion of the pattern. Did you double click on it, Kathleen, and open it all the way up? Because I noticed that if you just open it, it only shows you half of it, but if you double click into it, it shows you the whole document. Oh, Joanne says she hasn't started her quilt yet, has been remodeling sewing room. Well, that's understandable. And I'm sure you will no, benefit. She's right. It tasted like Havasu. Well, that's what we want it to take her oh, to okay. like Havasu. Yeah. Yeah, week 14 is like Havasu. So that's the one you want. But if you can't see the whole pattern, you can, Kathleen, you might need to double click on it. And if that doesn't work, just email me and I will send you the pattern directly at info. It's info at featherweightdoctor.com. Okay, so I have all my pieces here. I should probably be a good quilter and press all of these. Um, I don't always do this, but it's, it's do as I say, not as I do, right? 
I'm pressing towards my darks. Oh, Kathleen. Oh, thanks, Ray. Ray linked it for you, and if you can't get it to work, just let me know. Okay. All right. Did you guys all catch the show on Monday? Um, everybody was curious about what Denise named her machine. She named her Wilma after... The Charlotte's Web character of Wilbur and Charlotte. Wilbur was the pig, I believe. But we can't, you can't name these little machines after a boy. It has to be a girl name. They're sexy little feminine beings. Okay. This, this. There and then this big long seams. So, ironically, Tombstone <laughs> uh, is the city that we spent a Thanksgiving while we lived there, um, and it's you know, after the famous tombstone and the OK Corral, um, the city was, the, the town, I think they've tried to keep it kind of authentic looking. And so um, it still had very much like that old Western kind of feel to it. And um, it was actually one of the most favorite places I've ever been in Arizona. Um, when, to, when we visited uh, because it had so much history in it and um, I'll talk about it more next week. I don't want to, I don't want to steal my thunder, my own thunder. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. She says, I love the fabric. This is my ombre fabric um, that I purchased from E.E. Uh, e. Shank is the manufacturer. It's called Gelato. And um, I bought a fat quarter pack so that I had every color in their line. Um, and uh, I have absolutely fallen in love with it over this project. I have to admit, I was a little chicken to like even try the ombre fabrics, but. The thing is, is when something scares me, I have to, I have to kind of, um, I have to keep pushing through because otherwise I don't like it when something uh, scares me out of using it. So um, that is exactly why I picked this fabric, this, uh, with this project. <clears throat> I actually think the next one, the winter solstice project that we'll do after this is over with and into the winter is going to be just Kona solids. Um, so it's gonna be another one of those stash busters. So if you've got, um, you know, fabric on hand, I obviously prefer you use what you got. Um, and if you do need to buy, then I'm going working with a local shop here to put together a kit so that you don't have to pick out of your stash if you don't want to. So that's kind of the plan for that. All right, I'm gonna put a little, couple little pins in here just so things don't shift around. What I did for quilting is I literally just echoed, what camera, okay, we're on the front camera. I literally just kind of echoed this, this uh, uh, shape here every half of an inch. I would recommend drawing it out. I just kind of winged it on my sample and it looks okay, but it's not, um, it's not, perfect. Yes, this is a Singer iron. It's an antique iron. All right, let me grab a ruler. Hang on one sec. Ruler. Like a little ruler. Okay. So I'm not, uh, you can go down to this camera angle, Ray. I'm going to just draw my, my crossbars in here. So that way it's, um, it's, I'm not just, you know, I'm not winging it. 
precision is a good thing. I remember when I was for a new quilter and I, to me, done was good enough. I, I probably sat there for a really long time. Oh, <laughs> are you doing something Christmassy for November and December? We're doing a winter solstice table runner. Oh, I picked up some amazing ombre fabric from Stitching Post. Gorgeous. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Christmas time usually gets really busy for everybody, so I don't want to overwhelm everybody with too much, too many things going on. So we're just going to keep everything kind of simple like we've been doing on Wednesdays. I'm just drawing with a pen that disappears with my ink. I'm just drawing uh, some um, quilting lines on here. Uh, I would recommend doing that. And then when I'm done quilting it, they just all go away, so. Okay, one more set here. And then we'll be ready to sew. I'm going to use my penguin walking foot again. Alright, almost there. I think I told you guys earlier this week, so you can tell my, you can see my drawn lines on, that I have been really looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> like, really looking forward to Christmas. Uh, Ray and I were at Home Depot over the weekend looking for a tarp um, to cover up our camping trailer, and um, uh, we both brushed through the uh, Christmas <clears throat> section, and I was very tempted to come home with an artificial tree so I can put it up now. My husband said, go ahead and decorate for Christmas. I'm like, but we can't have a tree. It'll die. Like, there's no way it would even last to Thanksgiving at this point. All right. Penguin installed. St I'm going to start here on by just uh, outlining these, uh, the waterfall and back up again. I'm going to start by doing that in the ditch, just stitching in the ditch. I like to start with little baby stitches to kind of create some locking stitches. And then as I'm getting close to where I need to make my turn, I, I take my foot off of the uh, gas <clears throat> so I don't shoot right past it and then hand roll it to where I want to be. Missy says she's trying to be more accurate in her stitching. I am too, sister. I, like I said, I was sewing for a really long time before I gave a darn whether my seams matched or um, I had accurate seam allowances. But I am, um, I finally, because I started quilting in when I, right the year I got married, so that was 96, I believe. And um, uh, I didn't take any type of a formal class or anything until almost seven years into my marriage. So that's because this was before the day of YouTube where you could just go get watch a video or find out how to do something. And so that is a really long time in between, you know, just kind of winging it. I had my mother-in-law who was an amazing quilter and she was an excellent resource for me but um it wasn't until after that class seven years in i was pregnant with ray i remember 
<laughs> I'll never forget. I was very pregnant with Ray, and I'll, I'll the the instructor. Um, who is not teaching anymore, hasn't taught for a really long time. Um, she was giving me a hard time because I was going really fast. And she says, Mrs. Burton, you need to slow down. You're going to have that baby if you keep going that fast. Slow down. And I'm like, I don't know how to go slow. I like to go fast. I'm like Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights. Fast is good. She thought I was going to shake that baby right out. Okay, so I just shot past where I wanted to be. And my needle wasn't in the fabric. Did you guys notice I just barely picked up my presser foot and scooted the fabric back? I didn't attempt to roll the hand wheel in the wrong direction. We don't want to do that because we can... Um, wrap thread behind our assembly and get a thread jam and then you're sitting there with tweezers and fixing it properly and getting all the thread stuck out behind the bobbin assembly. So one of the quilts I or one of the um, machines that was in the shop this week was a little white machine and I kid you not I don't think that thing has seen the light of day for 30 years. It was gross like Ray's gonna do a post for me probably tomorrow or the next day showing the before and after but it looked like it was soaked in nicotine stains like that brown stuff which you can't see on a black machine but oh can you see it on a white machine but I uh, was watching my husband and I were watching the election results roll in last night and I was bored and I was looking to distract myself from what was going on on the TV so I uh <laughs> Just grabbed the cleaner and started cleaning her up. She just shines now. What does the winter oh solstice fabric look like? It is going to be, I think, I don't know exactly yet, Mom. I think it's going to be like blues, like a winter scene. Um, I'm going to use Kona solid so the fabric isn't going to have much of a pattern to it. Um, and I'm going to use shades of blues and grays for the backgrounds. So I think that's my, that's my thought in my brain. I haven't been to my friend's shop yet to pick fabric out, but that's what I'm going to be looking for. But again, if, if you guys have fabric in your stash or you just want to use muslin so that it's a low cost project, more of a skill building thing then I definitely encourage you to go to your stashes. I don't know, I don't have the stash I used to. At this point, I've dipped so far into my, into my uh, back stuff. I uh, have been trying to, I've been doing more fabric shopping, trying to build it back up again. I just have this thought, if we get shut back in this winter, I don't want to feel like I don't have Adequate supplies. Okay, so I am almost done. I have one more little. Missy's asking which. Oh, Missy. Oh, I'm going to go into gathering fabrics in Woodenville. Missy. Susan is a wonderful lady. Well, actually, all, all the shop owners in this area are fabulous. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with any of them. All right, I think that's it. Let me just make some little locking stitches here. And I'm done. All right. Let me get rid of my lines with my iron so it doesn't look like it cheated. So the, I use this friction pen and it's great in background areas. You have to be careful with using it on colored fabric because um, it uh, has been known to leave like some lines. Um, actually, I was watching Tula Tuesday this morning in bed before I got out. Oh, she had a great sale? Oh, I didn't know that. Anyway, and she was Tula was talking about how she uses the sew line uh, air-soluble um, 
air soluble pens and I haven't tried those yet so I might have to go looking for them I thought that sounded kind of cool anyway you can kind of see from the back my stitch lines a little bit better so there is Lake Havasu I'm gonna trim that up to eight and a half and put it on the board and then we just have two more to go tombstone and pace it um, and then we're gonna spend one more week um, I hopefully will have mine all together so we'll kind of set, spend that next Wednesday kind of celebrating. I think that's going to put us right around Thanksgiving. So we might take a Wednesday off for Thanksgiving and then we'll start back up with the winter solstice. So I've got some, I've got some designing and some calculations to make on fabric for you guys, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for me. Um, I'll be back on Friday, hopefully with Ray <laughs> for the sip and sew. Uh, my older sister is coming in this weekend from Texas, and so the twin and the older sister and I are going to have a girls weekend. I cannot wait. It's been a year since I've seen Deb, so I'm pretty excited. Um, I hope everybody has a great rest of your week. I hope you stay ha help, uh, healthy wow, and happy, <laughs> healthy and happy, and uh, you stay warm because it's getting cold out there. But uh, I just appreciate you taking a few minutes to sit down with me and talk about these my favorite little machines here. So um, again, this is Darlene with Featherweight Doctor. If you haven't liked us or followed us or subscribed to us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Like this video. If you think it was fun, share it with your friends. I like it when my videos get shared. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys back here on Friday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. I will be on, oh, Jennifer said, see you Ray on Friday. Uh, so Friday will be uh, 4 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook, and then I'll do my pre-show on Instagram about 10 minutes before. Hope you guys have a good night.